Well, I think what you saw recently was a lot of focus on Greece. And while that's obviously important because if it had gone wrong, it could have had a, a very dangerous effect, <clears throat> it's still only about 2% of the European economy. So the real big issue going forward here will be the success of Spain and Italy. And the good news is you've got some very reformist governments in both countries. They're not only undertaking the fiscal discipline, but they're starting to undertake the structural reforms. And that will be important for future competitiveness. So <clears throat> there's been a rolling discussion of what other resources Europe should put up. The one that's on the agenda now is this so-called financial backstop, the ESM, EFSF. Um, that's understandable because it's a form of insurance policy. I believe it's also important, however, to focus on the context for growth because the types of reforms that countries are undertaking are much harder. The politics of reform become a challenge if you don't have growth. So this could be use of some of the funds that are in Brussels for st uh, stabilization, cohesion funds. Um, it could be strengthening the role of the European Investment Bank, another one that's being discussed. So what you're covering day by day is the sense of, well, is Europe doing enough to solve its own problems before others put the backstop? I think this will, that the steps will be taken. Uh, there's some upcoming meetings in Europe. Uh, but I think we have to keep our eyes on the fundamentals, which is the context in which you can restore growth. What about the firewall? President Obama has said that it needs to be boosted. Well, I think it will be boosted. And I think that the, uh, one of the aspects will be, will the IMF then stand as an insurance policy? Um, the IMF has not yet stated what additional resources it will provide in the case of Greece. So even with its current resources, it could provide support. I think it's understandable that other countries want to see Europe put up their own uh, resources first. But I think everybody understands there's a common interest in having Europe succeed. Debt sustainability an issue? The IMF says that could lead the world to a recession. The possibility of that happening? Well, in the case of Europe, you really have three interconnected issues. One is the sovereign debt for some countries. That's a debt sustainability issue. The banking sector, and that is connected to the debt because if the debt loses value, it undermines bank capital and competitiveness. And so part of the reason why this rolling process in Europe is difficult is there's not a silver bullet solution. One has to work on all those issues. More generally on the world economy and related to debt, I think the IMF is correct. There's less room for maneuver than there was in 2008. I tend to be cautiously positive in the sense that I see the U.S. economy has got some momentum, not extraordinary growth, but I think it's moving in the right direction. If Europe stays stabilized, and that's a big if, I think that that will help the system. And I think China is likely to have a soft landing. So I think the two big risks are if Europe isn't able to maintain the stability and energy prices related to political and security issues in the Gulf. Is there greater optimism in global growth? Because Citigroup, for instance, has raised its forecast for global growth to 2.4 from 2.3 percent, yet someone like Stanley Fisher has said, be careful, don't be yeah. complacent. Well, I think they're both right in that, as I, as I mentioned, I have a cautious optimism. I don't want to overstate it. But uh, Stanley Fisher is correct in that what you've seen is um, a lot of focus on stability with monetary and fiscal policies. I mentioned in the case of Italy and Spain, but it's true for all countries. One also needs to focus on structural changes for long-term growth. And I'll be going to China next where we're working on an issue related to China's structural reforms. But it's true for Japan, the U.S., and Europe as well. If they don't make those structural reforms, then what you're likely to see is monetary authorities continue to have very loose policies, but it's not really the right fit for the growth issue. And then you may plant the seeds of future problems because it's a very unusual set of monetary policies. So I think Stan Fisher is right. You have less room for error. If you have uh, an exogenous event like oil prices, it can throw things into a tizzy. Uh, so I don't mean to be complacent, but if you ask whether I see things starting to come back, the answer is after four years of restructuring and deleveraging, yes. On the outlook for the World Bank, India has proposed a, uh, a multilateral bank that involves basically the BRIC nations. Uh, that will fund projects mm -hmm. in those regions. Is there concern perhaps that the World Bank will be less relevant with such an initiative? I don't think so. There are regional banks. Uh, many countries have development banks, and we'll have to see whether countries put up the money for these. There's been other ideas that people have talked about in concept. There's one bank of the South that has never made a loan yet. 
But I think what's driving that is a legitimate concern on the part of the Indians, which is the need for infrastructure development. And this goes to this issue I mentioned about the structure of growth, not just the macro policies. Um, in the case of India, there are also policy changes that relate to this, not just a question of capital. But <coughs> we share the interest of trying to build uh, more infrastructure in part through public-private partnerships. That's one reason why we created a hub here in Singapore to help draw experience on public-private partnerships for infrastructure. Mr. Zelig, what next when you step down from the World Bank? I don't know. I have to figure that out. I'm, I'm devoted myself 100% uh, until I'm finished, which I think is the right thing to do on June 30th. And then uh, there's, there's time after. So I've had good opportunities in my life. I hope I find some more. Is politics a possibility? Well, I've been involved in public service in different respects, and we'll just have to see what happens. All right. Thank you very much.